shipping containers. They're rugged, they're sturdy, and they're built tough to survive a life at sea. But once their traveling days are over, we sure can build some brilliant homes out of them. G'day John, how's it going mate? Yeah, great, nice to meet you Bryce. It is great to meet you, and what a cool home you've built here. Thank you. And what was it that inspired you to build a shipping container home? Seven years ago, property prices were going up and up and up. I built an office for somebody, I built another small sleep out for somebody, and then I started thinking that actually, you know, I could probably turn one of these into a pretty nice house. And so halfway through that project, somebody said, I wanna buy it. So I finished it for them and I thought, well, maybe I could actually build a better one. And so somebody bought that one from me and then somebody ordered one from me. And I was like, maybe I can make this into a business. And it kind of just escalated from there. Uh, when, I, when I built this, I built two at the same time. And I also built a smaller out of a 20 foot container. The idea being that I would have a spare one that I could buy some land and then have my own little place on another piece of land and get into the property market. Now, that's not quite happened because the property in central Otago has got pretty out of control in seven years. Yeah. So I've got half of the equation. I've got a spare house that's sitting there ready for me to either find a piece of land that I can put it on and build another one and do the whole landscaping and do all that again. Or I can sell that, I can buy some land and I can build another one. Yeah. This is definitely a phenomenal home that you've built here. What size is it? So this is a 40 foot shipping container with a bit stuck on here where my living room is and another push out on this side to make the bedroom area much bigger. That is really cool. The way that you've done these additional bump outs is really nice. Can you talk to me about how you accomplish that? Quite complex engineering actually. Right. Um, on the face of it, a pretty simple thing to do, but I cut a big hole in this side and what is the material that was the hole is now this wall. This is a door from another shipping container, from one of the side opening shipping containers. So that's a 1.5 meter shipping container door. That's my wall. It's all fully welded. And this is the same, the piece that I cut out from that hole, I brought it out, obviously put some sides on, so it's all completely welded. So a major operation. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. So with the additional bump outs here, what's the square meterage? So altogether, this is now 34 square meters. And one of the things that I really like about the way that you've done the bump outs is it also just makes it visually really interesting. It gives it more of that sort of conventional house aesthetic. It's not just a metal box anymore. Well, I did want to keep the containeriness about it. I didn't want to hide it from being a container, but I also wanted to make it really high quality. Yeah. The windows, the regular windows, everything about all of that and the inside, I wanted to keep as, shall we say, normal of a house and just keep the outside embracing, it's still a container. The attention I've put into the welding and my window details, I put a lot of time, effort, a lot of years of development, actually just to get it to look neat because it's actually quite a difficult thing to cut. Yeah, and you've done a really good job with that as well. Like, especially looking at these head flashings, that's really tidy. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with, with how they actually turned out. I think I'm the only person in New Zealand that uses that aluminium flashing. I'm certainly the only person in the world that uses that system because it's mine. I spent a lot of money engineering it. I am pleased with it, and thanks for noticing. Yeah, it's well, well <laughs> worth the effort in that one, eh? It looks really good. And the land where you've situated this home is just gorgeous. Like, having that mountain backdrop especially is just spectacular. I'm I'm pretty lucky that I found this spot. There's vineyards at the back, there's vineyards at the front. We live in a valley. It's pretty quiet. The noisy neighbors uh, that have just moved in are two paradise ducks. And <laughs> um, in a couple of months, there'll be some spurwing plovers that'll be making noise. But that's my noisy neighbors. Yeah, can't ask for better than that, no, can you? No. And it's nice the way you've done the wraparound deck here too? Yeah, it's pretty big out the front. I wanted to be able to walk all the way around. My cats get quite a lot of use out of that. They are uh, hearing them pitter-patter. There's my little cat flap for them to get in there. And I did want to keep the whole thing as a wraparound. So it's only a corridor area around the back, but when these trees grow up, that'll be a nice shaded area as well. Yeah, yeah. lovely. Well, the house looks brilliant on the outside and I cannot wait to see what you've done on the interior. Can we check it out? Sure, come on. All right, thank you. Oh, this is very nice. 
And from the moment that you walk inside, you can really get a sense of how much additional space you've created with those bump outs. Yeah, like I said, I've really put a lot of thought into this. Where do I need my space? Where am I gonna feel my space? So the window positioning, I put a lot of effort into like where am I getting my most light coming through? A window over here and I'm fully surrounded by light. The, the living space area, I mean, that's huge. I was gonna downgrade and put mini speakers in when I moved in. But I didn't have to. I've still got room for my big floor standers and everything works really great. I've got a decent sized table. It's my own custom made table. I'd make some furniture too. Yeah, so I don't feel like this is a small space and I certainly don't feel like I'm in 34 square meters. It is especially nice just having that additional space in the living room as well because you end up spending so much time here and it gives you options for entertaining and just what a nice space to be able to sit back and relax. Yeah, it is. It's very comfortable. I like it a lot. Yeah. yeah. And you're right, with all of the window positioning, you're able to let in a lot of light, but you're also able just to take in all those spectacular views. And I'm surrounded by spectacular views. Yeah. yeah. I'm very lucky. Everywhere you look. Yeah. And this kitchen is just beautifully finished. Thank you. Yeah, I put a lot of thought into this as well. I didn't want to have things that folded down and had to be put away, and I just wanted to use it like a normal kitchen. When I first designed it, I laid everything out with masking tape on the floor and put dummy bits of furniture in. I'm pretty pleased with, with, it, with how it's turned out, yeah. Especially in a kitchen, the space needs to be functional. Yeah, I wouldn't change anything again if I was to do it again. The bench tops in here are exquisite. Yeah, they're a little bit of an indulgence. They're Korean bench tops. They were made from the great company down in Alex. They helped me out choosing the best quality finishings. I love this finishing, the, um, I think they call these trivets, is it? The, yeah, the, the built-in sort of drainage. Yeah, yeah, just these little details. Yeah. Yeah, my indulgence. Very nice. And you've done a great job with all of the cabinetry in here as well. There's lots of storage space. Yeah, absolutely. There's a few secret drawers inside there as well, just to keep things hidden out of the way. I've got my big multi-cooker down in the end drawer for the stock pot drawer. There's really no shortage of space at all. I've got, in fact, I've got space left over. And all the necessary appliances in here as well? Yep, so everything's normal. I've got my full-size fridge, full-size washing machine, microwaves hidden in the pantry over there, dishwasher that I don't use very often, but it's there if I wanted to use it. And then over the other side, you've got the breakfast bar, which is now obviously doubling as an office space as well. Yeah, it works perfectly for me. Um, I'm doing some design work on my computers. I've got plenty of room over there. But yeah, it's a great space to work and keeps the rest of the place um, clutter free. Yeah, exactly. And the bathroom's down the end there, is it? Yeah, sure, let's just go and take a look. Let's take a look. Again, this is very nice. Throughout the whole home, you really have kept a very sort of minimalist aesthetic, haven't you? Yeah, I've tried to keep it that way. I figured it suits my style and I think it makes the place feel a little bit bigger, less cluttered. It's certainly my style. Yeah, very much so. You could almost think that you didn't live in here. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to keep it quite tidy as well. Yeah. 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 One thing that I think is really clever and that just immediately jumps out to me is the way that you've only half frosted the window. Can you talk to me about that? Yeah, sure. So I did want to have some privacy in case there was visitors, but it's really nice being able to take a shower and look at the snow on the tops of the mountains. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a, still a great view out there. It makes the place feel bigger as well. Yep, absolutely. Nice big shower in here as well, and I really like that you've got the shower dome too. The shower is a 1200 by 900, so bigger than a standard shower. Again, it's one of my indulgences. I don't really need a big shower. I'm not that big, but it just feels huge inside there. And yeah, it certainly is a, a nice indulgence to have. And you've got a flushing toilet in here as well? Yep, we've got a full septic tank system here. I wanted to have a full sink in here, but I was quite happy to have a half size vanity. So I've custom made the vanity. And again, this is with Corian bench tops. I don't need so much vanity space, but I wanted the full size sink. Those compromises I'm happy to take because I'm not losing out on anything. Yeah, I completely agree. And I really like that you've done that with the basin as well, because there's nothing worse than one of those tiny little basins and you turn on the faucet and water just goes everywhere and you can't control it. So just having a nice, good sized basin in there just goes so much further to making the space feel more usable. Yeah. And bedrooms down the other end. Can we check that out? Yeah, sure. All right. Again, this is just really nicely done. 
And I especially like the way that the bump outs have created this really unique shape in here. Yeah, so again, a lot of thought put into that. How much do I extend? And I figured, well, I only really need these bits extended where I'm getting into my bed. I didn't need to go the whole length of the container. So there's more than a meter on each side and I've got room for a chair to throw my clothes on at night. Plenty of room for my bedside cabinets. A lot of thought gone into it. And of course, behind me, the wardrobe sits in to this push out. So this is actually twice as big as it appears to give the finished result that there's symmetry inside this room so that both sides are equally stuck out. So again, a lot of calculation put into that. Yeah, that is especially nice. And just adding little touches like that makes all the difference in a space. Great that you've also sort of created a nice sort of area where you can get changed in here as well. Yeah, absolutely. And plenty of room for storage of clothes. And the large mirror there also just adds a tremendous sense of space. And again, a bit of psychology to make the space feel twice as big as it is. Um, I've got some office equipment inside there. I've got my printers as well as clothes and my junk folders inside there as, as well. So no shortage of storage space. Yeah, very well used space. And another thing that I like in here is the way that you've got the sliding door that just really connects this room to the outdoors. Yeah, so I did want to have a, a ranch slider there. Um, I didn't want to have any swinging doors that might get caught in the wind it does get pretty hot here in summer so having through ventilation is a big thing um, and having the curtain that slides all the way around the corner um, the guys that did my curtains did a great job of calculating that and making that all work for me so that I've got the whole window that I can see out of yeah it's a very tidy feature that mm. I like that a lot so I also made quite a bit of the furniture in here I talked to a lot of interior designers over the years about when I was building these things what advice could you give me and a lot of advice that they gave me was to be able to see as much floor space as possible to give the illusion that there's more floor space I couldn't find a bed that was suitable so I've made my own all made from raw iron steel I've got storage underneath but I can also see some floor, some carpet underneath there. And it only takes exactly the space that a queen size bed needs to take. There's no extra size of a headboard or a bottom of a bed. So that works great. I've also made my own bedside cabinets to fit into the space because it was a very specific space. I couldn't buy anything off the shelf. So again, I got my own laser cut and folded steel cabinets made. I had the components made. I welded them all together. They work pretty good too. Yeah, all of them just capitalize on the available space and not compromise on anything. Brilliantly done. And so how long have you been living in the home now? So I'm coming up for two years here now. And how are you finding life here? I love it. I've got to be honest. It's exactly what I wanted. The design just works so well. If I was to build it again, would I change anything? No, everything just works. I come home. I've got plenty of space. I've got my office over there. I've got my sitting spot over here. Everything just works so well. I wanted to build a home with no compromise. It would be a house just like any other, that it would be highly specced, that it would be energy efficient, that it would be easy to keep warm and to keep clean, that there'd be no unnecessary fluff that goes into a lot of architecturally designed houses or run-of-the-mill houses that are being built, that everything would serve a purpose and to have just a house that I come home to and live in just Normally, I open the door, I come home, I sit on the sofa, I turn on my TV, I go in the kitchen. Yeah, everything works just, just as it should. And looking around this home, it's really obvious the amount of engineering that's been poured into this. There has been no expense spared on really high quality materials throughout this build. Can we talk about the cost that was involved in bringing this home to life? Yeah, the budget. <laughs> um, so I did get carried away. I did indulge and did build to what I wanted, not to what I needed 230,000. That's great, especially for the quality of home that you've constructed here. I actually think that's a remarkable budget. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And so now the home is complete, you're well seated on the land. What does the future hold for you? That's a great question. Will I build more container houses? I'm not sure. I'm ready to take the next chapter, I think. I want to learn design and design products, and um, that's why I've got my office set up over here now where I can capitalize on the skills that I've built over the last few years and take a different direction. Yeah, who knows um, where that will end. That is very exciting. Well, John, you have just done such a brilliant job with this home. I can see the amount of effort and thought that you have poured into each and every millimeter of this house and it has really paid off. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thanks, Bryce. You're very welcome.
Here, John set out to build himself a home without compromise, and that is exactly what he's done. There is a tremendous amount of clever thought and engineering that has gone into making this home a reality, but ultimately, when you're living in a home, that's not what you see. You just experience being in a nice place, and that is how you know that you've done a great job.